Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Logic. The topic of this video is the Venn diagram. But first, I want to quickly talk about the Aristotelian versus the Boolean interpretation of categorical propositions. What's the difference, you may ask? Well, how do you interpret this A proposition? Does this proposition imply that there is such a thing as reptiles? Well, according to the Aristotelian interpretation, the answer is yes. But, according to the Boolean interpretation, the answer is no. Well, what about this A proposition? Does this proposition imply that there is such a thing as leprechauns? The answer is no, and that's for both interpretations. In summary, according to the Aristotelian interpretation of universal categorical propositions, the proposition always implies the existence of the thing talked about, but only if that thing actually exists. According to the Boolean interpretation of categorical propositions, the proposition never implies the existence of the thing talked about. But now when it comes to the interpretation of the I and the O propositions, both the Aristotelian and the Boolean interpretations are the same. They both imply the existence of at least one thing that is talked about. Some means at least one. Now, for the purposes of this video, we'll be using the Boolean interpretation. All right, well, let's talk about Venn diagrams. Venn diagrams are very fun. Venn diagrams are made of circles. These circles represent classes of things, like cats, cars, and fish. Now, for example, we can draw this circle for fish. We imagine every fish in the entire universe goes into this circle, and everything that is not a fish goes out of this circle. And as you know, every categorical proposition refers to two classes, so the Venn diagram will need two circles, the subject and the predicate. Now let's suppose that this circle represents fish and the next circle represents purple things. Area 1 will contain all the fish that are not purple. Area 2 will contain all the fish that are purple. And Area 3 will contain all the purple things that are not fish. And finally, everything outside of both circles will contain all the things that are neither fish or purple things. All right, let's work a few practice problems. Practice problem number one. This circle represents vegetables, and this circle represents orange things. What does area one contain? Well, select the correct answer. Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! Vegetables that are not orange. What does area 2 contain? The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! Orange vegetables. Good job. Let's continue with Venn diagrams. Now, drawing in the Venn diagram, you can draw an X in an area, or you can shade an area. If you put an X in an area, it means that something exists in this area, and when you shade an area, it means that the area is empty. For example, shading the left-hand part of the fish circle empties this area, and it pushes all the fish into the overlap area. However, notice that the fish must remain somewhere in the fish circle. And on the other hand, shading in an overlap area pushes the fish to the left and purple things to the right. Now, placing an X in the left-hand part of the fish circle means at least one thing exists there. Placing the X in the overlap area means at least one thing exists there. All right, well, let's work a few practice problems. What does the shaded area mean? Select the correct answer in three, two, one. Ding! Nothing exists in an area that is shaded. Next practice problem. What do you know about the area containing the X? Select the correct answer. Three, two, one. Ding! An X 
is in an area, and this means at least one thing exists there. Good job on those practice problems. Let's now use the Venn diagram to represent categorical propositions. Let's look at an A proposition. Now this proposition asserts that all cats are inside the mammal's circle. This means that no cats are outside of the mammal's circle. So we shade the part that is outside of the mammal circle, and this will push all the cats into the overlap area. Next, let's consider an E proposition. This proposition asserts that no cats are fish, so we shade the overlap area. This pushes all the cats into the left side of the cat circle. Next, let's draw a diagram for an I proposition. This proposition asserts that at least one cat exists inside of the circle of black things, so we place an X into the overlap area. This X represents at least one cat that is black. And finally, let's draw a diagram for an O proposition. Now this proposition asserts that at least one cat exists outside of the circle of black things, so we place an X inside the part of the cat circle that lies just outside of the circle of black things. This X represents at least one cat that is not black. All right, let's work a few practice problems. Practice problem number one. What must you do to diagram this proposition? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! Shade an area. Next, which area must be shaded? The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! Shade number two, the overlap area. Next practice problem, what must you do to diagram this proposition? The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! Place an X into an area. And which area does the X go? The answer in three, two, one. Ding! Area one. The X represents a dog that is not large. Next practice problem. What must you do to diagram this proposition? The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! You must shade an area. And which area must be shaded? The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! Area one. This moves all the cats into the mammal's circle. And next practice problem. What must you do to diagram this proposition? The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! You must place an X into an area. Now where does the X go? The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! Area two, the overlap area. Great job on those practice problems. Now, remember, universal propositions, they always require shading. And particular propositions always require an X. Now you're one step closer to receiving your blue belt in logic. See my other videos on logic. Comment, like, share, and subscribe. And have a great day.